الحمد للہ نحمد ونستعین ونستغفر ونؤمن به ونتوکل علیہ ونعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا ومن سیئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا کتب علیکم الصیام کما کتب علی الذین من قبلکم کما کتب علی الذین من قبلکم لعلکم تتقون ایام مادودات فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُتِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَامُ مِسْكِينٍ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ وَأَن تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَسُمْ وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيزًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِّنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو يعلم العباد ما في شهر رمضان لتمنى العباد أن يكون شهر رمضان سنا رواه التبراني صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Alhamdulillah, we are in the holy month of Ramadan. We are in the second Ashara, which is the Ashara of Maghfira and Forgiveness. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam divided Ramadan in three Asharat, اوله رحمة the first عشرہ are ten days and nights these are the nights and days of رحمة and mercy of Allah سبحانه وتعالى وأوسطه مغفرة the second عشرہ is forgiveness and مغفرة from Allah سبحانه وتعالى وَآخِرُهُ بَرَاءَةٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ And the last عشرہ 
that is acquittal from hellfire for those who perform their ibadat in the proper way in the holy month of Ramadan. Respected brothers and sisters, the month of Ramadan has a lot of barakat as you know. And we do mention it time and again and that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to await Ramadan since the first day of Rajab. Whenever he saw the crescent and hilal of Rajab, he used to make a dua. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaban wa balligna Ramadan. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless us in the holy month of Rajab and in the holy month of Shaban. Take us and keep us alive till the month of Ramadan to have the barakat and the maghfirah and rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and sisters, as we did mention and that is written on the board as well, that Ramadan are fasting. That is a self-control system. If you can control yourself, it means that you are a strong man. If you can control the whole world but not yourself, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the weakest one. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he asked his sahaba, Atarifuna man is shadeed? Do you know who is the strong man? So they said the one who can cause a defeat to his opponent in wrestling. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ الشَّدِيدُ بِسَرْعَ إِنَّمَ الشَّدِيدُ أَلَّذِي يَمْلِكُ نَفْسَهُ عِنْدَ الْغَضَبُ That that is not the case of wrestling. The actual strong man is that one who can control himself. Once our sheikh, he was talking to one guy. He was brought by his father. So our Sheikh Rahimahullah, he was asking him, why you are fighting? He said, I like to defeat people. So Sheikh Rahimahullah, he asked him, can you defeat someone who is stronger than you? Or you can defeat someone who is equal to you? Or someone who is lower in strength and power than you? So Sheikh Rahimahullah, then he himself explained, if you defeated the lowest one, you are not a strong man. And if you defeated the equal one, you cannot defeat him. How he can be your equal then? And for sure, you cannot defeat someone who is powerful than you. So it means that you cannot defeat anybody. He said, be a strong man, control yourself. Allah subhanahu, ya subhanallah, what a proper approach of our Shaykh rahimahullah was. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَمَّا مَنْ تَغَى Someone who transgressed the boundaries, وَآثَرَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا And he preferred the life in this world and worldly attachment instead of giving preference to life in the hereafter. فَإِنَّ الْجَحِيمَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى For sure his abode will be a blazing fire. وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى and whosoever who has a fear of standing in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And as you know, that is such a court, nobody can approach that court. Number two, no any gang can support you. No any party and community can come to help you out. And you cannot pay any ransom there or you cannot bribe anyone. These are the three ways. People are getting rid, rid, rid of difficulties. Number one, either to intercede by some big shot. Yes. Number two, to pay something as a bribe to get rid of the situation. And number three, to have a powerful gang or community or as the case may be, to help him out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ لَا يُقْبَلُ مِنْهَا عَدْلٌ وَلَا يُخَذُ مِنْهَا شَفَاعًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he totally demolished all these three concepts. That there is no gang to support you. There is no anyone to intercede to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the will of Allah. 
subhana yes alhamdulillah we are lucky people prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will intercede for us allah says man zallazi yashfa'u 'inda who is that one who can intercede in the court of allah man zallazi yashfa'u 'inda who is that one who can intercede in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can make an approach to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yes to take out that guy who has been put by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accountability to protect him so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says illa min ba'd izni yes after the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as you know my dear respected brothers and sisters number one prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of course he is there he will intercede for his followers yes and that is with the will of allah subhanahu and that's why our mashayikh rahimahumullah whenever they are in their old age they are trying to get settled there in medina for their death only because in a hadith narrated by imam darimi prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says on the day of judgment the first ever intercession i will do for the people of medina and who are the people of medina yes who stayed there and passed away there and they buried there respected brothers and sisters in hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says as you know when a small uh, kid boy or our da- daughter girl passes away so we do perform their janaza before last takbir and after the third one we do make a dua allahumma ij'alhu lana faratan waj'alhu lana ajran wa zuhran waj'alhu lana shafi'an wa mushaffa'a it means that this small muslim kid boy or girl he will intercede on the day of judgment in favor of his parents that is the second one and number 3 rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says man qara al quran fastazharahu fa halla halala wa harrama harama sometime we do explain the hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam half way yes only to persuade people to do that practice that is a type of cheating that's a type of corruption tell them whatever is mentioned by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is called tadlis fil matan or tadlis fil ma'na and that is haram so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we are trying yes to get people involved in hifz quran to bring their kids that's okay yes but we explain the hadith in a wrong way if you will make your son or daughter a hafiz do you know you will go to jannah oh brother the case is not that much easy as you made it that's not type 1 2 prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said man qara al quran fastazharahu fa halla halala wa harrama harama whosoever he memorized the holy quran but he believed in is halal as halal and practiced it and in its haram and unlawful as unlawful and avoided they abstain from rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says shuffa fi ashrati min ahli baiti and to tell you one thing we are yes as i do mention time and again that we the muslim our problem is that we are emotional rather than to be sensible and regarding everything we are emotional especially regarding deen we are emotional yes alhamdulillah month of ramadan is the month of ibadah but it doesn't mean that alhamdulillah masajid are full are most by brothers and sisters yes but when we will pray salat eid we will hug each other inshallah see you next year so this is excite this is what emotionalism this is not sensibility respected brothers and, and to tell you one thing else some brother i don't know ignorantly or they don't think like when they call me so they ask about tarawi when the tarawi start so i say inshallah 9 o'clock salat isha i say no tarawi i say brother tarawi is sunnah why you are not talking about farz first you must think about your farz salat first respected brothers and sisters in islam so try to be sensible may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us sensible say amen so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says man qara al quran fastazharahu fa halla halala wa harrama harama shuffa fi ashrati min ahli baiti on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will give him permission or he will uh, 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 allow him to intercede for 10 member of his own family those who are going otherwise to the hellfire so here rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned two thing number one memorization of holy quran number two practice accordingly fastazharahu fa halla halala wa harrama harama also rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in hajj when the hujjaj are there in arafat 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at their time, he makes an announcement. Sal tota. Ask me. You would be given whatever you are asking if that is good for you. Because otherwise, if this year we will go after listening to this khutbah, so we will be making a dua there in Arafat. They told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me as much as you have given to Warren Buffet. Or you have given to Bill Gates. Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never give everybody that much. نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَةٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَفْعَ بَعْضًا فَوْقَ بَعْضًا دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضًا بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَّةٍ وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says these steps and grades that is for the smooth running of this worldly system. If everyone will have as much as Bill Gates, who will be working then? Yes, everybody knows every profession, so who, nobody will be able to work. That's how we do utilize and exploit each other. Yes, one brother is doctor. Regarding medical problem, we do approach him. But if he is in need of a building, then he has to approach an architect and civil engineer. You know what I'm saying? And to tell you one thing, yes, the civil engineer can give him a sketch or a map, but later on, or a design or a drawing, but later on, he has to approach our Mexican friends to come as labor and to do construction. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is after the smooth running of this worldly system. And Allah has mentioned here in Surah Zukhruf, نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَةٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَفَعَ بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضَهُمْ بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَا So people may utilize each other, they are in need of each other. If somebody is needless, he has to be a guard then. And God is only one, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is a samad, eternal needs none, and everybody needs him. As far as the case of human is concerned, our President Obama, he is Obama, and he is President and Supreme Commander because he has the army, and he has this big nation, and America. If the nation is not there, so Obama will never be President. So it means everything depends upon each other. That's a dependable word. So respected brothers and sisters in Islam, anyhow, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says regarding Ramadan, that Ramadan is a blessed month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walau yu'lam al-ibad, ma fi shahr Ramadan, latamanna al-ibad, wa yakuna shahr Ramadan as-sana. If the people will come to know properly what is there in the month of Ramadan for them in the court of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala then they will be asking and making a request to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we want ramadan the whole year not only one month because everybody he wants to do more to earn more as we do regarding our worldly life yes sometime we do what over time time and a half or time and double why to earn more and more and if the boss will call us for saturday and sunday we are more than happy because that is double the time so it means that the month of Ramadan, it double your reward on the day of judgment. They will, for sure, they will wish for Ramadan to be the whole year, not only for one month. Rawahu Tabrani, An Abdullah ibn Masood in Raziyallahu ta'ala an. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, as I did mention last Friday, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Tasahharu fa'inna fi suhoor baraka. Do suhoor, because suhoor has a baraka. Sahur, it has barakah, eat at night. فَإِنَّهُ يُقَوِّيكُمْ عَلَى التَّعَادِ Fuqaha said, you will be fasting at daytime. It will give you, it will energize you. It will give you a power and strength to do fasting in the, in the, in, in the proper way. Otherwise, you will be making complaints. Today I am very hungry. Last night I could, oh brother, regarding ibadat, nobody has to make any complaint. You are losing your reward. You are losing your ajr. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Istainu bita'am al-sahar ala siyam al-nahar. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that based on suhoor, you should ask the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala walau bi jar'ati ma'in. Even though if that is only one single sip of water. If that is only one single sip of water, just have someone at night. And respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that مَنْ لَمْ يَدَعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَلَعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ فِي أَنْ يَدَعَ تَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ Whosoever, he does not leave his fusuq and, I mean, bad talk, bad words. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah is in no need of him to leave his drink and food. Actually, Ramadan is a refresher course. 
That's a training which takes place every year for one month that how you have to be in the coming 11 months. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ramazan ila Ramazan kafaratul lima bainahuma. One Ramazan to another Ramazan, that's kafara for all those small sins somebody has committed in between two Ramazan. Why? Because in Ramazan he got trained. When he is a trained guy, now he will try not to commit any major sin. But we are human, small sins, it will happen. In al hasanat yuzhibna sayyat zalika zikra li zakirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa aqimi salata tarafay al nahar wa zulafan min al layl in al hasanat yuzhibna sayyat zalika zikra li zakirin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that your good deed it will wipe out and wipe out it will erase your small bad sins in al hasanat yuzhibna sayyat zalika zikra li zakirin and respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Another important thing in the month of Ramadan is Atikaf. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, we fasted nine Ramadan with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because Ramadan became faraz and mandatory when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got migrated to Medina al munawwarah Yes, so he fasted for nine years, nine Ramadan. Ibn Masood says, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, that we fasted only two times for 30 days otherwise seven times we fasted only for 29 days because majority of lunar months are of 29 days not of 30 and Allama Qari says that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam innahu salla marratain salasin in his lifetime he performed fasting only for mean two times for 30 days so it means seven Ramadan that was for 29 but another thing Ibn Masood says, Raziyallahu ta'ala an, we have never seen Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he has missed the atikaf. So it means that in all nine years, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did nine atikaf and not only nine in the last year. He did his atikaf not only for 10 days and night, but for 20 days and night. And therefrom Abu Bakr got the idea that next year in Ramadan, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will not be amongst us. And that's why he did a prior etikaf then there for that Ramazan. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did the last etikaf for 20 days and night. Now etikaf that is sunnah al kifaya that is not sunnah tizayid, that's not a recommended practice, that is extraordinarily highly recommended practice which is called sunnah imwakkad. But there are two types of sunnah imwakkad like for us. One is called farzi'een, individual mandatory practice of every single Muslim. And number two, farz kifaya which is collective, uh, collectively mandatory practice of Muslim Ummah, like our janaza, our dafan, takfeen, tajheez. These are farz and mandatory, but that is farz kifaya Someone or some people have to do that. They will get the reward, other will get free. Yes, if nobody did farz kifaya the whole community would be held responsible on the day of judgment and they would be punished accordingly. Respected brothers, same is the case of atikaf, that if the atikaf is a sunnah muakkada ala al-kifaya, ala al-kifaya mean all people cannot do that. And now that is the concept of sharia, but a few people from every community, they must do that. They will be getting into reward, but others will get free. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, in a hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as I mentioned, that Abdullah ibn Masood says, he never missed an atikaf, that's why that became sunnati muakkada. But some sahaba, they were not doing atikaf, it means that that was not sunnati muakkada ala al but that was sunnati muakkada ala al-kifaya, which is a collectively responsibility of the Muslim ummah in every community. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, but as many brothers we have for atikaf, that will be good, inshallah. And this year, I will try to give them a refresher course also. A refresher course of tafsir and hadith and atikaf. Yes, I will try not to allow them to sleep much more. Yes, so they may spend their time in the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the actual hikmah and philosophy of atikaf. Our Shaykh rahimahullah used to do that. Yes, after salat fajr he used to give a lecture. Then after salat zuhur he used to give a lecture. Then after salat asr he used to give a lecture. Yes, for to those who were in Atikaf, Sheikh Rahimahullah, respected brothers and sisters in Islam, now 
Atikaf is mentioned in the Holy Quran in so many ayat. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam when he was ordered and commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build up the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he ordered him and tuhir baytiya lit taifeen wal aakifeen wal rukkai sujood. Yes, to clean and purify my house lit taifeen for those who will be doing tawaf. والعاكفين for those who will be doing اعتكاف والركع السجود and those who will be making ركوع and سجدة means praying and as you know that there are three عبادات there in the house of Allah سبحانه وتعالى number one تواف number two صلاة number three اعتكاف and in a hadith رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم says and to remind you one thing as I did mention before that we are looking for something good for our community and especially when people are in recession or the whole world is in recession so we are looking for more and more good or for better and best so that's why we are looking for agent to take us to hajj with yeah, economical expenses yes so the agent he agreed only for 50 seats but already we have 45 yes so only five seats are left otherwise the agent, the same agent even, he will be charging you after that 1500 or sometime 2000 more. He said, no, that's a deal which I have given to Sheikh Qadi. I cannot give that deal to anybody. And some other hajis, because that's a big company, and they are taking hundreds of people to hajj in Mina. Some people fought with that agent. That because I tell my brothers and sisters there, don't tell anybody, yes, how much we have been charged by the agent, not to create problems for him. So some hujjaj kiram they fought with him. We are, have the same facilities, but you charge the people of uh, Islamic Center of Natrich that much, and you charge us 2,000 more, and he said, so he's a very smart guy. He said, Let, see, this is my business. They said, of course. He said, next year, I will bring the people of Islamic Center of Natrich for free, no cost. What's your objection then? Should I bring you free as well? So then, so anyhow. Now we have only five seats left, so if somebody is interested to go for Hajj, so he should give his uh, photo state copy of his passport and other requirements either to Brother Inam Qadri sitting there or Brother Pervez because uh, the, the, the agent, he will come in the month of Ramadan and he will take the documents. Anyhow, so in the Haram of Allah or in Haram in Makki, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned three things. Number one, Tawaf. Number two, Salat. Number three, Atikaf. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Inna Allah yanzilu kul fi kulli yawmin wa layla mi'a wa ishreen rahma ala baytihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending 120 rahma to his house in Makkah every day and night in 24 hours. Sittun liman yatufun. 60 for those who are making tawaf. Wa arba'oon liman yusallun. 40 for those who are making their nafal salat there. Wa ishroon liman yaakufoon. And 20, that's for free. A guy is sitting there with the intention of etikaf even for one hour or two hour. Imam Muhammad ibn Hassan al-Shaybani, rahmatullahi alayh. The authority in fiqh Hanafi, he says that etikaf, a mustahab etikaf can be for one hour or two hour as well. That's why when we go in jama'ah, so we do make the intention of etikaf for three days. Yes, or if you go with jama'ah for one day, so we make the intention of etikaf. When you enter to masjid, just make the intention of etikaf. That is mustahab and recommended etikaf. But as far as the case of sunnah etikaf is concerned, it has its own specific time, which is the last 10 days and night of Ramadan. And number two, or number two, that will be in the month of Ramadan. You cannot do it in uh, another, uh, uh, mean another time or another month. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And tuhir baytiya littaifina wal aakifin wal rukka is sujood. Now what is the purpose or the hikmah of etikaf? As I did mention time and again regarding ibadat and worship. That is umur al-ta'abudiyya. Umur al-ta'abudiyya, why you are doing that? I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. Yes, that's the only thing. Why you are doing that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered to do the same. That's called ita'ah. That's called Ita'a, regarding sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that's called ittiba'a, to emulate the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look, sahaba rizwanullahi alayhi wa sallam, we have our classes, one class is that of Islamic jurisprudence. So I was telling them that hukum or order, that's of two types. One is called al-hukmul wazi, the same, one is called al-hukmul taklifi. 
Then I was telling the students that al hukmu taklifi that is of five categories. Number one, that is wajib. Number two, that is uh, sunnah. Number three, that is haram. Number four, that is makruh. And number five, that is mubah or permissible. So these are the five categories of things to be done or to be or to abstain from. Or to abstain from. So now everything which is haram, you have to abstain from. You must abstain from. Why? Don't look into the philosophy. Allah said, don't go close to that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa prohibited that. Yes. Whatever is order, they do that. So why you are doing that? Don't look into the philosophy. We are not here for philosophies. We are here for obedience. We are here for coffee and emulation. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, if I would like, a, if I would make a request, if you can come forward. Alhamdulillah. Now we have to think about another masjid then. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallahu feekum. So anyhow, the hikmah and the philosophy of etikaf, as you know, the word etikaf are ukuf. Ukuf means to tie. Ukuf means to tie. So you have to tie and confine yourself to masjid. And that's why Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah says that there is no etikaf but only in that masjid where salat juma is taking place. Because if you will do your etikaf in a musalla, where salat juma and Friday prayer is not taking place. So salat juma is first. You cannot miss it. Then you have to go out and to attend salat juma in another masjid, which is against the spirit of etikaf. Because etikaf means confinement. Just confine yourself to masjid where you have made the intention of etikaf. You can go out only for al-hajat al-bashariya. Hajat al-bashariya if the bathroom is not available inside. And that's the outside. So you can go for al-hajat al-bashariya. And you can go for your food if that is not available inside the masjid. But alhamdulillah, we have uh, a few brothers. They are taking care of the brothers in Atikaf. They bring them everything there. Yes. And that's why I have put restrictions on brothers in Atikaf. You cannot go to kitchen even because you don't need it. Yes. So Atikaf means confinement to masjid. Number two, retreat. Yes, just retreat and retract yourself from worldly business. Don't have your cellular phone in your pocket. Yes, honey, how are you doing? Yes, but he came back from school or not? Oh, brother, what is this? What type of etikaf that is? <laughs> etikaf means retreat. Just confine yourself to masjid and devote yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. You cannot do that only for 10 days and night. You cannot control yourself only for 10 days and night. So you will lose the philosophy and the hikmah of etikaf. So that's actually seclusion. That's actually a retreat. You have to disconnect yourself from worldly attachment and worldly businesses. And that's why you are not bound to go for farz and kifaya. Somebody passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect Allah first, but it will happen. Yes, people will be getting die. Someone who is an etikaf, even though if someone died from his own relative, he should not go there. A lot of Muslims are there, they will perform his janazah. That's for the kifaya and not for the rain. But he must complete his etikaf. Respected brothers and uh, sisters in Islam. Anyhow, when the etikaf will start this year. So as you know, that the proper recommended way is that you should come to masjid on 20th of Ramadan before sunset to start your etikaf right with sunset. Because with sunset, the night starts in Islam. The night starts in Islam when? Sunset. With sunset. So right after sunset, you have to start your etikaf, and then you will go back when? When that is announced that tomorrow is Eid. So whenever the Eid the, uh, announcement is made, then you are free and you can go back to your home and house. But those who have some excuse that they cannot come at that time. So before dawn break, which is the night between 20th and 21st, he can start a sunnah etikaf before dawn break any time at night. He should come to masjid and start there. And if you do not have that much time, so just make an intention. I will be making etikaf in this masjid or any other masjid at least on weekend. At least on weekend. One day and night, two day and night, three day and night. You will get the reward. Not only that, you will feel it. That how it will make your heart transparent, how you will get into uh, a mean spiritual satisfaction. Yes, and mental tranquil. And as you know, that in matter and material world, most of the people, they are confused. To so get out of that confusion, 
you need some spirituality and that spirituality is there in the kaf wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah